questions. Oh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, members of the community, thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Waitakere Experience Networking Group. I'm Pip Mandis, I chair the group, and on my right is Sharon Stewart, who's one of our fellow committee me members, as opposed to <laughs> Councillor Sharon Stewart, who's a little bit, I think, further to the right. <laughs> we represent 113 businesses based in the Waitakere region, all of whom operate in the tourism and hospitality sectors. I note that this is not a full um, representation of all businesses in those sectors in the area. Um, but the decisions taken by the committee today will have ramifications on a far larger number of people who live and work there. The purpose of our group is to responsibly promote the Waitakere region and its values of environmental sustainability and the unique and broad range of experiences offered while contributing culturally and economically to the local community. That is our, our stated aim of the Waitakere Experience Group. The businesses in the group are, are very diverse. They range from activity and tour operators to accommodation providers, um, food and beverage establishments, art and culture um, experiences and event venues, and obviously a whole lot more as well. As diverse as they are, they are, however, united by a few common themes, one of which is the love and respect of the unique area in which we are all privileged to live and work. A respect for Te Kaurau Maki and their endeavours and responsibility to protect the forest. We share the distress and heartache at the infection and spread of Kauri dieback disease. And we honestly have a genuine desire to be part of a solution to heal our forest and restore its health. Nobody's arguing any of the points put forward today. However, not all of our members are direct concessionaires operating in the regional park but everyone is economically affected by the number of people who travel to the region. Um, the primary reason obviously being to explore the many tracks that crisscross the ranges. Before or after they tramp, these people eat in restaurants, drink in bars and cafes, they visit arts and culture outlets, many of them stay overnight, they book tours and activities, and they make plans to come back at a later stage. Complete closure of the tracks and the ranges will dramatically reduce visitor numbers to the region. It will have a huge impact on the livelihoods and the ability to earn an honest living of everybody in our networking group, and indeed all the other businesses that operate in the sector in the region. And for many of these businesses, this is their only or primary source of income. 24% of our members are activity and tour operators and direct cons approved concessionaires. Their businesses will close immediately or be so compromised as to no longer be viable without a drastic redu reduction in staff numbers and for some of them that's not even possible. 13% are food and bev outlets. Um, who They tend to rely on daytime visitors for 50% of their income. Dramatic reduction in those numbers will obviously compromise that and for many of them it will take them below a level needed to cover fixed overheads, overheads and sustain their costs. Their business model will no longer be viable and you could probably question their future as well. 14% of the group are involved in, in what we call the arts and culture section sector. Again, they rely on weekend traffic for 40 to 50% of their visitor numbers. 46% are accommodation providers, and that excludes the myriad of Airbnb providers. Um, they're primarily small family businesses, and the estimates that we've received from them are 65% of their guests are direct, directly in, um, involved in tramping and exploring the ranges. Um, we, we would, as I said earlier, we, we're a group that that is committed to responsible tourism and values of economic, at least environmental sustainability, and we really would like to be part of a solution. We have a, we have a design, we've got a multi-level ability to actually be part of a solution that's offered. All of our members are members because they support responsibility in this area. So they, 
they carry literature, they carry information, they educate the people with whom they come in contact. They advise guests and visitors of temporary track closures, they strongly advocate support and adherence, um, and they are able to, to recommend low and no risk options as we go forward. Those businesses who operate directly in the regional park already carry cleaning kits and demonstrate and insist on their use. It's part of our concessionaire agreement to do so. They're vigilant and I can tell you in many cases extremely vocal of other park users' behaviour, particularly when it is ignoring cleaning stations, going into closed tracks um, and any behaviour that is untowards the responsible tourism and, and environmental sustainability to which we aspire. We've had several offers from our group since this discussion began to actually sponsor the new cleaning stations, which I believe, and I'm not going into the science, but I believe are, are proven to be more effective than the current ones. We've had um, offers to sponsor them as individual operators, and we've had offers for collect collectives of our members to join and sponsor stations. We will support and enforce any track closures and advise our guests and visitors to do so. And as I said before, we will look at options of no and low risk tracks wherever possible. Um, we want to be part of the solution. Nobody likes seeing this disease and, and what it's doing to our forests. Our request therefore is, is, is to you councillors, in, in considering the decision that you've been asked to make today, please take heed of the high price and human impact that a total closure will have on the hundreds of businesses that are economic contributors to the region. I know that Jack mentioned the need for a small and temporary sacrifice. It's far greater than that. It's not a small and temporary sacrifice for these people whose ability to put food on their tables and their very livelihoods will be severely compromised by a complete closure of tracks. Um, we, call, we call for and re request balance, and I think that is, that is really the win-win the situation for everyone here. Um, we strongly request that you support option three but with the assurance of sufficient funding and resources to implement it properly. Our belief is as it stands at the moment, it probably needs a bit more on that, on that area. We further ask that Council makes it a matter of urgency to work with IWI to find ways to mitigate risk to the forest and open tracks as soon as possible. This could include new boardwalks, cleaning stations, information dissemination, certified access, manage visitation, and all of these possibilities and approaches are areas that our networking group are able to assist with. We really would like to be part of the solution. So as a representative of these businesses, I really request that you're mindful of the positive impact that we as a group can have on through all of our interactions and contacts, our presence in the community, our valid input and concerns, and our shared and very sincere desire to be part of a solution and not part of a problem. And I thank you all. Well done. Thank you, Pip. You happy to both take questions? Very happy. Okay. Any questions? I, I, I'd like to thank them. I'm happy to thank oh, Happy to move the thanks, Councillor Simpson, and I'm happy to second that. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. That was very clear. Thank you. And then the second presentation also from the um, business perspective and user's perspective, um, Tony Dunham, Ben Thornton, warm welcome to you, Busham Beach, and again, you are well known to us over many, many years. All right, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Just change my notes from good morning to good afternoon. <laughs> so, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the committee and members of the community. Um, my name is Tony Dunn, and I'm presenting on behalf of Bush and Beach regarding Cowrie dieback in the ranges. This gentleman to my right is Ben, who's one of the co-owners of Bush and Beach. <clears throat> and I'm one of the senior guides <clears throat> at Bush and Beach. I've lived in Pihar for 20 years, 
been a member of many community groups such as Waitakere Rangers Protection Society, uh, the PHA rate payers as well for the past five years. Um, for those who don't know us, um, Bush and Beach is a small business owned by Ben and his sister Penny. Uh, we've been running fully guided tours in the Waitakere Rangers for over 30 years now. From small beginnings, we now have a staff of 20 people. We believe we operate responsibly in the region and we hold Qualmark Gold status for the work that we do. And last year, we also won Best Small Tourism Business in New Zealand. As well as supporting community groups, we fund one of our staff members to work one day a week in the Piha Valley region, doing pest control in an attempt to improve the natural environment for everyone. Simon Stoddart, Park Ranger, said, and I quote, the positive effects on the general forest health cannot be underestimated. He even found some cowrie snails for the first time ever in the area that we've been working in. We are disappointed at the slow action around implementing cowrie dieback management from the council and understand frustrations from iwi and environmental groups. When there are issues in the region such as fruit fly and painted apple moth, they receive rapid action and funding but a disease affecting one of our most important keystone native trees does not seem to command such urgent action. Our guides ensure that our guests are aware of the issues around Kyrie dieback, and 100% of them go through the footwear cleaning process. Each of our guides, each of our vehicles, carry their own cleaning equipment. For when the park stations are empty, which is all too often, unfortunately, we also then contact the park rangers, let them know any issues around the cleaning stations, and we educate other park users when they're standing there going, what are <coughs> these cleaning things for? I know other concession holders do the same sort of work on behalf of the council. In August, Ben and I had a meeting to try and think of any way we could help to be part of the solution and to speed up implementing carry dieback control measures. We offered to help fund a full cleaning station, and whilst that offer has been acknowledged, it has not yet been actioned by Council. Once again, you guys are trying to be part of the solution here. I know from talking to other concession holders, as Pip was saying as well, that they're very happy to help with funding install cleaning stations and also help spread the message to other park messages, other park users as to what the issues are. So Bush and Beach, basically, we support option three from the options given in the report. Options one and two simply don't go far enough. And option four or five would mean in their current state, we would not be able to run the tours that we advertise and that we have council concessions for. Around 40% of our guides time is spent in the Waitakere Ranges. So closures to the extent of option four or five in their current form would result in a cut in staff levels. We estimate up to eight of our guides could lose their jobs. With this in mind, we would ask that the council support option three. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. Questions? Ben, did you have anything to oh, add? That's fine. Happy to answer questions. Yep, happy to answer any questions. Okay, Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and thank you. I have a couple of questions about what you have said to us this morning. My first is around, uh, did I hear you correctly when you said you have offered to fund cleaning stations and that offer hasn't been taken up? Correct. It's been acknowledged, but uh, with all of the work that's been ongoing, um, I believe that's just been put to one side at the moment. And it was a recent offer, or how long ago was the offer? Uh, August. August, okay, thank you. And the second thing is, um, you mentioned that, I, I, I understand that the people that you take through the ranges that go through all the health uh, yeah, safety correct. aspects, but there are people, of course, that don't use your tours that still use the tracks. Correct. Um, and that you had said in your presentation that you thought that there were people who didn't know what to do with the cleaning stations. Very much so. When we're stood cleaning our clients' shoes and making sure everything is complied with, people are saying, why are you doing this? So are you saying that potentially our signage isn't adequate for those people who aren't on a guided tour? That would be the assumption I would take as well. Right, thank you. So I'm just distracted. My bad, <laughs> distracted by the mayor for a moment. I do apologise. Sorry, Councillor Simpson <coughs> and Tony, answered. you had your question well answered. Um, Deputy Mayor. Thanks. <clears throat> Gentlemen, how many people would use your tour a year? I'd say in the region of uh, seven to 8,000 people a year. And um, how many months of the year do you operate? Oh, it's 12 months of the year, albeit it's three seasonal, so a busy year between November and April compared with the winter months. So the, the methodology that you use to ensure that people's footwear 
walking sticks, etc., is, is is clean and disease or pathogen free. Is that checked off um, that it is the right quality, white strength? How do you do that? Yeah, we um, work with the park rangers to find what the techniques are that they advise to use. And as concession holders, that's our responsibility to make sure we're using the recommended techniques, the recommended chemicals. And that's why I say we carry cleaning equipment in our vehicles and in our packs that we're carrying. We have spray because if we get to a point and there's no spray, we want to make sure we've got it. How are you going? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Member Blair. Oh, I'll ask that. Kia ora. Um, I'm actually a business owner as well, um, so I understand the challenges with businesses. And given that markets do kind of come and go um, in my business environment, I'm just interested whether you've looked at other diversification within your business to accommodate a potential loss of a market. Um, I'm part of a tribe through the Woodhill Forest or obviously you might have had a look there or at other ranges to, to have these tours. So I'm just interested to hear if you've had a think about diversification. Well, we, in addition to our rainforest and, and black sand beach tours, we do operate to Waitomo, Hobbiton, etc. But as Tony alluded to, 40% of our revenue is derived from the Waitakere Ranges. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's a key, key, key cornerstone of our business, really. That's, that's what we're known for, is, is Bush and Beach, not a Waitomo date operator or a, Waitomo, a Hobbiton operator. I'd say given a longer time frame, yes, we could potentially look at other scenarios. But obviously we are operating on a, a tour company business um, where people are booking a certain thing, often months in advance. So to, to change your product to say, we can't go to this area, we're going to go over there, um, but the drop of a hat is not really feasible for oh, I don't us. think we're dropping the hat. But, um, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, in, with a long term. Also, with just one quick question. Around those seven to 8,000 people that visit, how many would you kind of potentially um, think would go back and not practice <laughs> the appropriate um, cleaning of their boots? And I think we don't just clean their shoes. We explain the issues behind it yeah. and often with overseas visitors we hear back from them oh I we have know. similar issues yeah. back home mm. so it's not just about doing the methodology of cleaning shoes it's about actually explaining the issues behind it why we're doing it uh, the impact it has on our forests as well and often we get that reciprocated by them saying we have the same issues in the west coast of america we have the issues here western australia all sorts of places so so I'd like to think if they came back into the forest, they would follow those procedures. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And final question, Markov. Yeah, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I'm just really wondering whether your position is a long way apart from what Jack Craw and Nick uh, Waipara were saying. Um, we would have confidence, I think, in concessionaires such as yourself behaving responsibly and minimising the danger and avoiding the risk areas. The difficulty is uh, how you deal with those that don't act responsibly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could close you down who act responsibly, but if we then don't have an impact on those that behave irresponsibly and who then don't have the option of a guided tour to tell them about it, uh, we, we might be taking one step forward and two steps back. So I suppose my real question to you, uh, can you conceive of a way in which we can practicably implement a situation where guided tours and responsible behaviour in the bush can be separated from leaving the place wide open and, uh, uh, and having people who don't give a damn uh, or, don't, or who, are, who are simply ignorant and therefore transmit the disease. Yeah. Thank you very much for the question. I agree a lot of, um, I concur with a lot of what Jack's Draw and Nick were saying. Um, if the nuance of my line of the extent of option four or five in their current form because that hasn't been, as Nick was saying, um, included in that framework. Yes. So yes, us operating as an entity within a controlled area network, then yeah, obviously if we can continue to work and provide the service that we're providing and keep our people employed, then that's our goal as well as the importance of protecting the forest and the carbon tree. So if yes, I take some things that were said then, and I agree. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair.
Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think that's going to be the substance of our, when we get to it. Okay, right, all questions asked. Um, who would like to move the vote of thanks? Maybe Councillor... Okay, Councillor Coxon and um, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Aye. Carried. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, very you very much time. for being here. <coughs> I'm actually just going to call a five-minute adjournment. I think people may just need a bit of a breath. And then we're going to invite our staff to take us through the the actual presentation. Oh, local board, local board. and local then board. the presentation. Yeah. I just think.